Check the description for the following discount codes. I had someone in the comments say to me the other day, Carl, can you do a video about charging over Oculus Link? He said, some people's headsets seem to last ages. Other people's headsets don't seem to last anywhere near when using a link, a link cable. This is the official Oculus Link cable. So the answer to, to this is twofold, but both quite simple. The first, the first and most important answer is that USB ports, USB 3, mostly put out up to about 900 milliamps. That's as much as they'll put out. I think there's some you can get that do up to 1500, but I haven't, I've got a relatively recent motherboard and mine only does 900 milliamps. So compared to the charger that comes with the Quest, which is two amps, so two amp is 2000 milliamps. So 900 milliamps, 2000 milliamps. That's just over twice as much power being able to charge your Quest when it's plugged in versus what it is over USB. Now, that's obviously pretty simple to understand. Um, but then the other part of the fact, the other part of the equation is how much power you're drawing at any one point in time. If you were to be running something whereby the Quest isn't pulling more than 900 milliamps, the battery would stay at 100% and would always be charged. But this, of course, is quite unlikely. Um, and it will vary, let's put that down there, it will vary um, how much electricity, how much you know, charge it's, it's using based on what you're doing. Obviously, when you're using um, the Quest 2 over Link, there isn't that much processing being done by the headset itself. It's mostly being done on your PC and then it's encoded into a video stream and that video stream is sent to the Quest 2 and that's then decoded on here. But there will still be variations. So on a frame per frame basis, the more that changes, the more processing power and so battery power is used to decode that next frame. If it's, let's, let's say it's a static image, just say I'm sat here and I don't move for 10 seconds and I'm running 10 frames a second, that's 10 frames, right? If nothing has changed over those 10 frames, there is no additional decoding, or almost no additional decoding, to do because nothing in that image has changed. This is also how compression works. Um, if I was to be waving my arms around, jumping around like a bell end, and every pixel in every frame is different, not only does it take longer to encode, but it then takes longer to decode at the other end. At least this is how I believe it works. And I may, I'm no expert in video encoding and decoding, but this is my understanding of how it works. So that will use more power from the battery to decode. Then there's the image that's actually being presented on the screen of the Quest 2. If it's a very bright image, that will use more battery than if it's a completely black image with just one lit pixel in the middle of the screen. So again, depending what you're playing, what you're looking at, and how much is changing, will determine how much battery power is being used. And again, how much that link cable will be able to supplement that usage. Um, then what else? Then of course there's the audio. If you're running a set of external headphones like me, they will pull more power than if you're just using the standard built-in ones, those tiny little, for want of a better description, piezo speakers that sound like utter crap. Um, strap some headphones on, you're gonna pull loads more juice that way as well. Again, dependent on volume levels. Presumably, if you've got some decent headphones, you're gonna have it up pretty loud like I do because why else would you put them on there? So that's gonna pull more power. And then finally, and this is a bit of speculation, even though most of the work is being done on your PC, the Quest still has its four tracking cameras built in to monitor your head tracking and monitor where your controllers are. I'm going to hazard a guess that the more you move around, both your head and your hands, the more power is used in the headset to monitor and track, again, those changes frame 
per frame or however it's actually done. I don't, you know, I know you can adjust the tracking frequency of the cameras from 50 to 60 hertz so it doesn't get interfered by your lighting. So we can kind of assume they try, I'm here in the UK so it's at 50 hertz. We can kind of assume it's updated 50 times a second. It might be that because it updates 50 times a second, the actual rate of change, the amount that's changed doesn't make any difference to the power consumed from a tracking point of view. I don't know, it's just speculation. But what we do know is louder speakers, greater volume, more power drawn, brighter images on the screen, more power drawn, more changes on a frame per frame basis, more power drawn. And so that is why, depending what you're playing, you'll get a different battery consumption and, and hence battery life um, over link. And depending what your PC outputs through its USB 3A or USB 3C port, that will make a big difference as to how long it lasts as well. So yeah, relatively quick and hopefully easy to understand video. I do my best to try and explain things. Again, to the best of my knowledge, I don't know everything. So some things I'm sort of basing on logical assumptions. Other things, of course, I have researched and I've looked up and I do know what I'm talking about. But um, yeah, hopefully you found that helpful. As always, thank you very much for watching and take it easy.